Right, ladies and gents, we are now going to talk about probing. Okay, okay. so I guess probing is all about answering this question. I've got my genomic sample and I've se separated DNA out in some way, but I, I still need to know where is my sequence of interest. For example, I've got a, a gel here, electrophoretic gel here, I've separated DNA fragments, I'm looking for a particular gene, okay? And I want to know where it is from here, where on this is my gene of interest because I want to extract it and I want to manipulate it further, I want to do more stuff with it. Um, or for example, on a microarray, I might have I might have a different patient samples here, so samples of, of DNA from uh, different individuals, and I want to know which of these individuals bears the gene with a particular mutation. So I'm, I'm looking for a mutated sequence in a, a large number of individuals in this case. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking for a particular sequence, and the way we do that is by probing. Okay. And essentially what we do, the principle is, is, is quite straightforward. We essentially, we have a sequence that we want to find. Where is the sequence? Okay, so the sequence might belong to a gene. It might be a mutated sequence. I want to see how many individuals have a mutated gene. So I construct a nucleotide. Uh, using nucleotides, I make a short segment of, I make a short segment of uh, like a polynucleotide, okay? So, say it's that long. But this, the bases that these, that this polynucleotide has are very specific to the sequence that I'm looking for. So say it's that, for example. So what I would do then is to treat, I would apply my probe to these samples of DNA and through complementary base pairing, which would be specific for my sequence of interest because this polynucleotide that I've made is complementary to the sequence that I'm looking for. So this sequence, it would be in a solution of some kind and it would be applied to the whole thing. So I would add many, you know, a solution of this to all my wells here, and I would apply it to the whole gel here in this case, or a membrane if it's, if it's been transferred to a membrane, okay? And what would happen is, in most cases, it wouldn't find, this probe wouldn't find its complementary sequence. So it would just randomly bind at very low levels or probably not bind anywhere. But where it finds its complementary sequence, it will attach, and it will attach in a much higher concentration than in other places. So the probe would bind to the sequence of interest by complementary base pairing and its concentration would be high there. But then the next question is, well, how do we know that that binding has occurred? And that's the other part of probes. So probes are usually modified with some kind of signal. Right? So either the probe is uh, radio labeled, i.e. it's attached or it's modified so that it's got a, a radioactive isotope on it, um, and as long as we have some way of detecting that radioactivity, we'll know where it is that the probe has bound and where, therefore, our, where the DNA is with our sequence of interest. Yeah? So either it's radio labeled or it could be a fluorescent, which is nowadays more the case um, because, you know, there's, there's safety concerns with fluorescence versus radio labeling. Um, but essentially, they're sending out some kind of detectable 
ceiling. Okay, so that's the other property of a probe. So in its entirety, the, the probe has to have a sequence which is complementary to the sequence of interest, and it must have uh, some kind of modification that sends out uh, some form of uh, radiation uh, that we can detect. Okay, um, and that's really that. So a review. Well, so let's just you know take it to its completion. Then, for example, this probe might bind here, right there. Okay. So it's bound there, and what, what I would do then is to expose this gel, after I've added the probe, I would then expose it to a photographic film of some kind, so that, and then develop that film and see where is it on this gel where I got, you know, the exposure, um, where, 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 where was the signal detected, okay? so. You know, if I did place a photographic film on this and then lift it off, yeah, I would get some kind of exposure there. And that would tell me that my DNA of interest would be in that position and I could cut that out and then use it for my further processing. And in this case, I'm sure you've seen the images, um, you know, uh, I'd get fluorescent signals in certain places which would tell me that these individuals have the mutated sequence whereas all, in all these other individuals there was no binding between the probe and the DNA and therefore they don't have the mutation, they don't then have uh, the condition that I'm interested in. Okay, so it's the detection of the signal that tells you that the probe is bound. Shall we just review that? One, um, we need uh, samples, samples of DNA that possibly contain the sequence of interest. I'll just abbreviate that sequence of interest. There's some kind of DNA fragment that we are interested in. It might be a gene, it might be a section of DNA that we've many genes. Um, or even it might be a mutated sequence. Um, two, then we need to probe that DNA and our probe must consist of some form of synthetic, so we've actually made this um, synthetic um, polynucleotide, some kind of synthetic polynucleotide, and this is important, which is complementary, complementary sequence of bases. Okay, it's got a complementary sequence of bases to the sequence of interest. That's important. Three. Okay, the probe, so this is the probe, the probe must also be modified with either a radio label, i.e. it emits radioactivity, so with radio label or Uh, a fluorophore, so it's emitting fluorescence. Okay, so A, it has to be able to bind to your sequence of interest, and B, one, you know, once it's bound, it must you must be able to detect where it's bound, so it needs to be modified with a radio label or fluorescence. Okay, so then four would be that we apply the probe to the DNA sample. Apply probe to DNA sample and then give it some time for the binding to occur, wash away all the unbound stuff, and then you must, um, you can detect 
or yeah, you can detect the location of uh, of you can detect the location of the emission of radioactivity or the fluorescence. So the radioactivity is usually like some kind of photographic film, but you can do that electronically as well. And the fluorescence is usually electronically uh, measured. Okay? Right? So once you've detected the location, you essentially know where your sequence of interest is. Right? So, um, yeah. Okay, guys, and so that is probing.